coach said she is just fearless, has been challenged throughout this entire season. Duke has one of the best strength of schedule down the list on the season. And to start everything off, Virginia Tech will get the ball first in their maroon jerseys. Elizabeth Kitley tried to find the look on the interior first to Rose Mishaw. And that will be a turnover, and they'll give the ball back to Duke. I wouldn't expect anything less of them trying to establish in the paint first and then try to get to the outside play a little bit. Here's your starting five for Duke. There's been a very impressive player for them in this season, the transfer from Boston College. As Kennedy Brown steps out for the triple, could knock it down, and Virginia Tech holds in just to one shot on that possession. Chelsea was very intriguing. We talked about it in the open, just how Duke coming off of one of their most impressive shooting performances from deep, 59% from beyond the arc for 13 trays. Can they keep that going? Yeah, I mean, they were able to get inside the paint and kick out for threes. That's, ooh, that's... Interesting call. I thought she was going to pull out the chair right there. But whenever you get a chance to get inside the paint and kick out for threes and then knock them down, everything kind of opens up. It loosens the defense a little bit. And so that's what you're going to be looking here for this Duke squad. You just saw Carol Lawson in her fourth season here at Duke as Virginia Tech on the board with the triple. Off the bounce, Kennedy going at Kitley. 6'6 six, six frame. Kennedy Brown standing at 6'6 six, six as well. This has been a matchup. And Kennedy and even Reagan Richardson knowing Kitley and what her moves are getting to the rim and defending. A lot of attention going to Georgia Amor. Kicks it out. Good ball movement for the Hokies as Kayla King is on the board. Kayla King has gone one for four from outside in the last three games. To see that one go down for her, it's almost a sigh of relief for Kenny Brooks. All six points coming from outside for the Hokies. Kitley got the seal, got the bucket, and a timeout on the way. And it was a joy to watch them last year. They just played with so much joy and so so much freedom. And so to be able to build off that and come back the next year with a lot of people that was able to accomplish that, it has to be fun. One of those people coming back was Elizabeth Kitley, who could have entered into the draft. This is a very fun group and a, and a team that wants to get back to the final four. Yeah, Short no, shot clock. For that. Four on the shot clock for Virginia Tech. King has to heave it. And it drops! Kayla King, two triples already tonight. 11-0 lead for the Hokies as we're about midway into the first quarter. And two free throws on the way for Reagan Richardson. Not sit down. Georgia Shepard, who leads the way, was leading the ACC in threes made as well. Georgia Amor has some, some work to do, but has been impressive beyond the arc as well. Kayla King, 82% of her points come from beyond the arc. Man, I couldn't even imagine doing one thing that's 82%. <laughs> wow, to be able to shoot that many threes? Wow. Jane Donovan bringing a lot of energy, very much like Okanawa off the bench. Seen a lot of their uptick in the last few games. Connor with spin move. Almost lost her footing, able to gather herself on the inside. One too many steps for Richardson, and that will be the second turnover for the Blue Devils. Ten on the shot clock. Elizabeth Kitley battling underneath against Jaden Donovan. Has a single coverage. Two on the shot clock. Bounced in, fade away, and Jaden Donovan beside herself. Really give me any type of confidence in making the I like, call. I like what you did there. I like and really holding her own. And for you to go at the two-time ACC Player of the Year. Richardson, again, power move to the bucket. To throw different bodies at Elizabeth Kitley on the block. Steal. Okanawa dishes it off, and Richardson with another bucket. And able to push in transition to lead to the easy lay. Averaging 11 points, three Blue Devils are averaging double figures this season are coming into this ball game as Georgia Amor left alone, and that's a bad idea. Finding Amor as we're under a minute to go in the first quarter. Mayer found the lane, took it, gets the bucket. 
I mean, you were kind of right, Angel. They kind of needed a little, a little help seeing the ball go through the basket, and they've been able to get good looks so far. Have had three buckets in the last minute and 45 seconds. It's a much different story prior. Elizabeth Kitley, Patton, fade away. Smooth as it gets. Works on it all the time, just seeing the work that she puts in with the footwork. Kenny Brooks talks about that. Just adjusting as the last possession can be for Duke. Seven seconds left. Duke short, tipped in, and ends bow. They'll say it's no good. As Virginia Tech off to a great start after the first frame, had the 11-point lead. However, Duke went on a bit of a run towards the end of that quarter. Some things that you want to see carried over. Yeah, Duke really started off the game shooting threes and outside shots. We we'll see if they can listen to the ultimate floor general on this possession here. Is very alongside Chelsea Gray. You just had to little throw that in there real quick. I just speak, I, I think very highly of you. <laughs> <laughs> Back door, that's broken up by Eck. You got to watch out at the top of the key. Oluchia Kanawa leads the team in steals as right on cue, a steal for Duke. The bucket right off the rim. And that was something Carol Lawson was very frustrated with in their game against Virginia, despite them winning. She said there were some missed opportunities. We're getting the looks that we want. We're missing point blank shots. Those are the points as a young team she wants them to grow in. When you go back and you chart those moments and you chart those offensive possessions and things that you can get back. Underneath, Olivia Samuel was left alone. How she got that over the outstretched hands of Kendi Brown. Not sure, but it goes down for her first bucket of the ball game. Jackson. That possession, they just got a little locked up after the pass went, but I thought that was great defense. Kitley rolls that one in off the base. And the score is Kyle. Taina Mayer also quiet from the field. Able to knock that one down. That was a good setup. Great setup by Mayer. She was able to attack the defender on the screener and able to set that back pin for the three. And the cable on the board now with the triple. After the first quarter, there were only two players on Duke that had scored. That was Richardson and Mayer start seeing that hesitancy and you, you almost question why after seeing you know the last second heave and two threes going down in the first quarter maybe she just wants to shoot the ones that's five four three two one and and then at that point you just say okay we'll find her at that point <laughs> you know less than two minutes to play in the first half duke outscoring virginia tech in the second quarter eight to six king might have gotten away with a little bit of a travel there it was a little bit of a hop skip and a jump and a jump. Oh, we're going to add that one in there too. Georgia Amor. After hitting her first two threes, has missed her last four. Dish at the rim. Kennedy Brown gets that one to fall. First bucket for Kennedy Brown. Seven-point ball game. A minute to play in the first half. Kitley going at Brown. Turns around. Money ball. If they can make her go to the other side and go to the help, I mean, that's going to only help Duke's defense. She's getting into that pocket, into her fadeaway way too easy. But that, that that's what she loves, and that's her bread and butter. Yeah, that, she passed up a, gr a good shot to get a great shot and a great look. That might have been a foul right there, a little bit of an and one. I know Carol was calling for it. You know what the thing is, like the physicality, we haven't touched on that for Virginia Tech coming into this ball game. They said they learned that a season ago. This was the last game that they had that they lost in ACC play. And they remember that moment. So Duke cutting into it. Just a seven-point ball game once again. And you kind of feel the momentum shift, kind of go to the Duke's way a little bit. And 
Yes, Here he comes was able to get a wide open layup. Gets the fake and the bucket. Five point ball game with the swing in Duke's favor. Georgia Amor looking for help. Top of the key has two to work with. That's knocked away. Duke will get it back with point six. Richardson all over the floor for Duke. Eleven turnovers for Virginia Tech, and Duke made them pay. Yeah, they did everything on the defensive end that they were trying to really keep it up in it by getting into the lane, hitting some jumpers, and, and doing a nice job for Duke in that first half. Reagan Richardson leading the way with nine points. No players on the Duke side are in double figures. Elizabeth Kitley on the other side does have 12.7 rebounds to add to that, as you can see the tail of the tape on the left side of your screen. Virginia Tech, though, held to their second fewest points and a half this season. Their earliest uh, points or lowest points was 25 against NC State. Uh, but this is their lowest scoring quarter where they had eight in the second. So Kitley saw a little bit more of that physicality you're asking for. Yeah, you got to make her do something different. Make her go to her counter move instead of her fadeaway. Nice move by Jackson. Then Virginia Tech. Virginia takes on Georgia Tech. So we'll see that as well on the ACC network. That's all day from 4 to evening. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you have all the devices to catch that. So just a two-possession game after a slow start for Duke. Just scoring seven points in the first quarter. But they return the favor defensively in the second as they held Virginia Tech to just eight points in the second. And part of that was Virginia Tech was just turning the basketball Woo! over. And that's a great block by Jaden Donovan. Great defensive possession there by the Duke Blue Devils. And, and you sure miss Jaden Donovan in the first half defensively. Jaden Donovan, who went after that first block in the first half over Elizabeth Kitley, got called for the foul. That was all ball for the freshman. Jaden Donovan, one of those players for Kara Lawson, she's, she's spoken very highly of in the last couple of games, which she brings off the bench. Jackson knocks down another three. One point ball game. She had one just like that on the other wing in the first half. Trying to think if she was going to come up with that one. Georgia Amor off the bounce has not scored since the three-minute mark in the first quarter. Three to work with top of the key. That might have been tipped. It was Richardson leaking out. Jackson coughs it up. Kennedy Brown with the dish on the inside. Richardson sends it back out. Jackson, step back. Money ball in the first lead for Duke in this one. Man, that's a nice move. Nice punch dribble. I wish he would have stepped step back a couple more inches to get that three-point shot. The charge we're seeing from Duke as they had the first six points in the third quarter. Virginia Tech looking for any offense. Kitley held up, short on the shot. And yeah, that's a bunny that she wishes she normally makes, makes that one. Jane Donovan able to almost thread the needle there and get it to Jackson in the corner. Jackson able to work her way on the inside and takes the bump. We'll get two more free throws. How about the aggressive play we're seeing from Jackson out of halftime? Yeah, she waited to see if they were going to close out a little bit. Gave him a couple jab steps and knocked it down. And then when they went right back to her into that pick and roll action, nice punch dribble separation. Step back for that for that jumper. Clara Strack picks up her second foul. So she will take a seat. We have a substitution for Virginia Tech as Samaya Suffren, the freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Checks in the ball game. Get the ball in the Kitley. Get a nice, easy bucket in the lane. Seeing a different look for Duke as they continue to build on their lead. And 13 points from Jackson as she's leading all scores. Why has this game turned around for Duke? 
After a slow start, Kitley from the baseline has gone ice cold. Will advise pass on the inside. Georgia Amor looking for an opportunity in the paint. Cops that up. 13th turnover for Virginia Tech. Actually, they'll be calling this a jump ball, and it'll stay with the Hokies. And this is not something you want to see as Georgia Amor, I do believe, is at the bottom of that pile. And needing some assistance. aware yet of what happened to put her in the state but what we do know is that it's good to see her up and on her feet getting a um, much deserved applause from the crowd as well kind of hard to Right there, an elbow just everybody on the floor trying to get it. Both teams playing extremely hard, and sometimes those moments is wrong place, wrong time. So Jackson calls that up, but she has been outstanding for Duke in this quarter. She has all of their points to start the third. Another turnover for Virginia Tech. That'll be their 13. Dish pass underneath. That pass was going to, but they saw something I didn't. And she got up and skied for that tip in. Defense leading to offense for Duke. Chelsea, that's something I don't think I've ever heard. They saw something you didn't. I mean, that's I saw rare the rare air. Pass. Rare air. <laughs> <laughs> Wenzel tried to dish that one off on the inside. Lost it. Piling up back-to-back -back turnovers and Duke responding with their own as soon as possible. Another turnover, and this is what it's looked like all third quarter. Scoring off of the transition buckets they're creating off from their defense. Can you imagine us saying at this point after the game had started that Duke's shooting 41% from the floor? But that's something you can believe. Off the bounce, nothing there. Bounce around a little bit. Wenzel dishes it on the inside. A much needed bucket for Virginia Tech. Seeing a little, a little more of the zone, too, for Virginia Tech. They have a little bit of a different lineup. Whenever you're losing the head of the snake in, in Georgia, Amar, you kind of have to find a way. The coaches to can only say so much. The, the huddles have to get tighter. The words have to get stronger. You have to hold each other accountable. And it's possession by possession. You're not going to have... Regina Mayer has had a quiet night so far. Just two for seven from the field. But everyone else has been able to step up, including Richardson, who just continues... To so Virginia Tech just has four points in this frame as the bump is there and free throws. 70% from the free throw line this season will step up and knocks down the first of the pair. Then Louisville takes on North Carolina at Carmichael Arena in Chapel Hill. Women's hoops every Sunday right here on AC Network and the ESPN app. Lead for Duke as they're now up by 12. Suffren tried the spin move to no avail there. The kick ahead, nice dish to Imsbo, and the foul committed. Brooks just trying to figure it out right now without Georgia Amor, Amor on the floor. But he talked about it. He said, listen, it all starts with the big three for him, and that's with Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amor, and Kayla King. 
and how they need to lead with one another. Now Kayla King and Elizabeth Kitley returning to North Carolina as a still there. How do they step up? That would have had the crowd elated as this three ball drops in for Okanawa. She now has five points and knocks down her first three of the ball game. Kenny Brooks talked about it. Offensively, they got to be poised, make the right selection on shots, and not turn over the basketball. And they already have 17 turnovers, and it's not in the fourth quarter yet. Virginia Tech averaging 11 turnovers in the season. And they had that in the first half. Close to a turnover there. Kitley able to get it back. King squares up, knocks it down. Big bucket for the Hokies. I would look for Kayla King and Elizabeth Kitley to really be, be established in that fourth quarter. They have to make a run and make Kara Lawson call a timeout starting the fourth. Less than 10 seconds to go in this frame. Jackson at the top of the key going at Wenzel. Steps back. That was tipped, and that will do it for the third quarter. Wow, how about Duke? Once Duke is able to get out in transition and, and, and get to flowing and they're seeing the ball go through the net, they're really hard to stop. So Virginia Tech starts off the quarter with the with the ball. Georgia Amor has not returned to the bench. And jo Elizabeth Kitley has been a little bit out of rhythm since the second quarter. Mayer dishes it to Kennedy Brown. Good to see her back on the floor after she took the hit. Went to the locker room. As Kennedy Brown knocks down the first. Lisa Leslie Award preseason watch list. And this one double-figure scoring game in league play. And she now has four points. Full court pressure from Duke. That patent full court press we've seen as another turnover. Everybody's in their positions, communicating and ready for defense. And it's very interesting, too, that some teams will try and, and play with fire and see if they can dribble their way out of that press. But on the pass, they found some success as Jane Donovan missed Q of where she wanted to take off from. So Wintel will slow things down at the top of the key. Georgia Amor went out at the 636 mark. In the third quarter, as Kitley Abel, Angel Gray and che Chelsea Gray, no relation mm -hmm. that we know of, on the call as Reagan Richardson continues. Kitley's not in the paint. She's having to guard the pick and roll, go into the action. Samaya, so nice bucket at the rim on that to try to narrow this lead in this fourth quarter. Mayer held up off the glass, in and out. Trying to see if she can stick her hand in the cookie jar. Looking at the rim. Trying to figure out your stroke. As the first one. It's Sunday afternoon when Pittsburgh squares off and gets number 19 Clemson at Little John Coliseum. I would do the pose and everything. <laughs> we need the footage. Uh, that, uh, that, I don't, that I don't we think can't they find have it. that anymore. VHS, VHS. Kennedy Brown steps out for the three. Akanawa gets the bucket. You talked about from the beginning of the show and what's been on display all season. Man, she just outworks the entire Virginia Tech defense in the paint and is able to get the and one. And those plays is what Virginia Tech has to limit if they want to get back in this ball game. Could knock down the free throw. Finds the ball again. Might have gotten a little loss underneath. As that's going to be a turnover and the 12th for Duke. So Jaden Donovan checks back in. Great size for Jaden Donovan, too. Six foot freshman out of Washington, D.C. As the foul at the other end will send Virginia Tech to your point with the clock stopped. line just three for eight could handle the physicality we've seen it on display so far <laughs> in this ball game Richardson finding the lane and got the bucket 
points. This match and the amount of points she had against South Carolina has sub it seven double figure games. Elizabeth Kitley does have the 18 points but has struggled in the fourth quarter. Just two points in the fourth quarter so far. Four points in the third. Add him up. Add him once again. She had a little flare with the one hand and finish. That, that's a jelly or, or what's that? What we call that? <laughs> You're more hip than I, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that to you to figure it out. <laughs> Saffron tried to dish it on the inside, and it seems like that Florida State in Tallahassee, where Sarah Bajetti just erupted, became one of the starting five for NCAA as well. And Duke just quicker, stronger, faster, hungrier to the ball in this ball game. Man, you've seen so many possessions where you thought Virginia Tech played great defense, going to go down the court, and who it is? Who is it? Oconowa. Get into the lane, get in the... Reagan Richardson <laughs> knocking down the shot from the high post area. Her season high and career high, 28. She had that this season against Richmond, and she is chipping away at that as she's right now at 22. Another foul will be... Down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game and look ahead at the best matchups. Two on the shot clock. Mayer pulls up. Syracuse and FSU also underway. The last time we saw the score, not sure. Get into the lane a little too much, and that's how they were able to increase this lead. I mean, you got to give credit to Duke as well because even with Georgia Amor on the floor, this was a team that was just fighting and clawing back into the ball game after being down. Not by double-digit margin going into the second half, into the second half, but Rachel Conowa with nine rebounds, seven points as Virginia Tech held to its fewest points this season if they continue here without a bucket. Less than 30 seconds in the ball game. Three on the shot clock as Kennedy Brown rolls that one in. Carol Lawson told us we haven't had a staple win yet over a ranked team as her team came off of one of the most impressive games against Georgia Tech and now stringing back-to-back -back home games now together where we've seen them fight and be challenged in different ways in those contests. Yeah, they've done it by committee, and they've done it on both ends of the floor, taking good shots offensively, defensively, getting into the lane, making deflections, and finishing it with a box out. And it doesn't get easier for the Duke Blue Devils as they have two more ranked teams waiting for them on the other side as they take down the 14th ranked 